n1, n2, n3, so on. Theoretically, these stretch lines must be vertical ones, but since there are tolerances between the compressor moving parts, in our case the piston, and the compressor static side, in our case the cylinder, there is an internal recirculation of the gas from the compressed side of the piston to its low pressure side. Therefore, the total gas flow transfer by the compressor is diminished and consequently the stretched lines have a certain inclination. The curves of actual flow versus differential head associated to a centrifugal compressor can be adjusted to a polynomial correlation where the head decreases meanwhile the flow increases. Now, here, you can see a representation of the most common compressor installed in chemical and petrochemical plants. Anyway, I must point out, out that slide compressors are not very common. But anyway, I prefer you know this kind of compressor. So, but one side we can see volumetric compressor represented by screw compressor, lobs compressor, reciprocating compressor. And the other group of compressor, the dynamic compressor, non-volumetric compressor, that is represented by centrifugal compressor and axial compressor. Reciprocating compressors will be analyzed on details in next module 4. We can see in this slide the main features related to this equipment. Since uh, the main purpose of this module is to study the centrifugal compressors, in this slide and next ones, I am showing only the main peculiarities of volumetric compressors. Here, in these images, you can see how the log compressor works and how the gas is coming from the inlet to the outlet, in outlet of the compressor, increasing the pressure. Now, you can see a fantastic representation and how the lobes work in the compressor. From the lower side, the gas is going to the compressor and the lobes compress this gas till the discharge of the machine where the pressure is increased as well as the the short temperature of the gas. The screw compressor is a very sophisticated design with male and female screws. Here you can see a very big screw compressor with two screws, the male and the female, and the upper frame of the compressor. Finally, here there are the centrifugal and axial compressors. Axial compressors are not very common in process plants. Normally, they compress air at a pressure no higher than 5 bars. The main application of this machine is for gas turbines to compress the air in the combustion chamber at a pressure higher than 15 bars. The centrifugal compressor 
can be considered the king of the compressors. Its technology has been improved in a very fast way. Nowadays, centrifugal compressors are able to compress the gas till 700 bars. It was unbelievable 40 years ago. Now you can see a graphic where it is represented the different areas of operation of the compressors. In horizontal coordinates, it is contemplated the inlet flow of the compressor. This inlet flow is must be considered as actual. That means at inlet condition of the compressor, at the inlet pressure and temperature. Don't forget never that because it is very normal to make mistakes. At the vertical coordinate, it is represented the the sharp pressure of the compressor. So with this graphic, you can take an idea of which kind of compressor you can choose and to be installed in your plant. You can see that there are few compressors that has not been contemplated in our former slides. It is a diaphragm compressor, a rotary liquid ring compressor, but the other compressor, the most important compressor, has had contemplated in this graphic. You can see reciprocating multi-stage, centrifugal multi-stage, rotary screw, centrifugal single stage, reciprocating single stage, and axial compressor. I think that it is a good tool for starting your first selection of the kind of compressor you must install. Now, we arrive to the thermodynamic applied to the gases handled by our compressors. Since uh, you are engineer, it is supposed that all the laws related to the perfect and real gases are known by you. Anyway, my idea is to show you all the formula in order you can remember them. In this slide, it is developed the formula related to the adiabatic isentropic work generated by a compressor for ideal and perfect gas. At the end, you can see two results. One work is related to the pressure and specific volume of the gas at the inlet of the compressor and the other is related to the suction temperature and molecular weight of the gas at the inlet of the compressor. Here it is calculated the temperature of the ideal gas and at the discharge of the compressor considering a isentropic transformation. In the graphic, the entropy is represented on the horizontal coordinates and the enthalpy on the vertical one. Temperature are represented by horizontal lines and pressure by inclined lines. The gas at the suction of the compressor has a temperature Ta 
and a pressure PA. At the discharge, the compressor, the gas has a PD pressure and TD temperature. Uh, you can see that since uh, we have talking about a isentropic transformation, this one is represented by a vertical line. The value of this segment corresponds to the work required by the compressor and the increment of enthalpy applied to the gas. Now we consider an adiabatic transformation that with efficiency lower than 100%. Therefore, the transformation cannot be an isentropic vertical line, but an inclined one. The discharge temperature of this gas now is not TD, but a higher TDR. Now, for real gas, it is necessary to consider a new factor. It is the compressibility coefficient Z. It is necessary to emphasize that for real gases, compression our temperature cannot be calculated with the formula applied to ideal and perfect gases. When the difference of the values between the centropic exponent at the specific heat ratio is very high, the real discharge temperature will be also very high if we compare with the one corresponding to the ideal gas. Here, it is developed the formula related to the isentropic work required by a compressor when it compresses a real gas. You can see that this formula are similar to the ones shown for ideal gases, but introducing a new factor, the compressibility coefficient Z. This graphic is a molar enthalpy pressure and corresponds to the compression of CO2 gas in a multi-stage compressor. The red lines correspond to the adiabatic compression. The horizontal ones correspond to the heat removed from the gas through the discharge coolers. We can see that in the first stages, the compression enthalpy is the same that the enthalpy removed in the coolers. 